One of the first questions that I get from prospective investors is usually about the returns of the fund. We're super transparent about our track record. So you can see how we've done on our website at lighthavencapital.com. I'm very proud of our results, and I think they speak for themselves. One word of caution, though. You can't simply look at Lighthaven's historical performance and assume that the future will look the same. Of course, my personal goal and hope is that we outperform the S&P 500 over the long term. But I don't have a crystal ball, so it is simply impossible to predict the future. One thing that I am sure about is that Lighthaven will perform differently than something like an S&P 500 index fund or an ETF. Index funds and ETFs are designed to track an underlying index. They're cheap and will go up and down, just like the underlying index it is tracking. In the case of the S&P 500 index, that's been pretty good on average. If you look back at the returns of the S&P 500 since 1871, the average returns of the S&P are about 10%, including reinvestment of dividends. But there's more to the story than that average. The history of the S&P is like a roller coaster. It's feast or famine. Let's talk about the feasts first. In 2019, the S&P returned over 31%. In 1995, the S&P was up an amazing 38%. And 1933 was a record-breaking year that still stands today as the best year of the market. In 1933, the S&P 500 was up an amazing 57%. There were, however, also devastating famine years when the market crashed hard. In 2008, the S&P was down 37%. In 1974, it was down 27%, and in 1931, it was down a soul-crushing 44%. Of course, we know that intellectually, we should just simply ignore the ups and downs of the market and stay long-term focused. That's easier said than done. During 2008, I remember friends and acquaintances, many doctors and lawyers, throwing in the towel and selling all their stocks when they saw their portfolios halved. It's a sickening feeling when that happens and none of us are immune to it. I also remember the Great Recession well. We didn't have a shorting strategy back in 2008, although I did do basic things back then to protect the portfolio, such as holding cash instead of being fully invested in stocks. Even so, Lighthaven's strategy tanked in 2008, down 31%, the worst year we've had. That experience convinced me that we needed to protect the fund in addition to investing in great companies. That difficult year was the reason that I worked so hard to add shorting to Lighthaven's strategy. By continually honing the long and the short programs, we are doing everything we can to achieve my personal goal of outperforming the market while also protecting the portfolio from stomach churning downturns. There are no guarantees in either investing or in life, but in my experience with hard work, dedication, and a relentless focus on introspection and learning, success happens. I know that since I believe that outperforming the market is possible, I have a shot at making that happen. I also know that there are people who don't believe that beating the market is possible, so those people won't even try. In my opinion, it is those types of people who invest in index funds and ETFs. For the rest of us, there are funds like Lighthaven. <laughs>